The Book of Kells, sometimes known as the Book of Columba, is an illuminated manuscript gospel book in Latin, containing the four Gospels of the New Testament together with various prefatory texts and tables. It was created in a Columban monastery in either Britain or Ireland or may have had contributions from various Columban institutions from both Britain and Ireland. It is believed to have been created c. 800. The text of the Gospels is largely drawn from the Vulgate, although it also includes several passages drawn from the earlier versions of the Bible known as the Vetus Latina. It is a masterwork of Western calligraphy and represents the pinnacle of insular illumination. It is also widely regarded as Ireland's finest national treasure. The illustrations and ornamentation of the Book of Kells surpass that of other insular gospel books in extravagance and complexity. The decoration combines traditional Christian iconography with the ornate swirling motifs typical of insular art, figures of humans, animals and mythical beasts, together with Celtic knots and interlacing patterns in vibrant colors, enliven the manuscript's pages. Many of these minor decorative elements are imbued with Christian symbolism and so further emphasize the themes of the major illustrations. The manuscript today comprises 340 folios and, since 1953, has been bound in four volumes. The leaves are on high-quality calf vellum, and the unprecedentedly elaborate ornamentation that covers them includes ten full-page illustrations and text pages that are vibrant with decorated initials and interlinear miniatures and mark the furthest extension of the anti-classical and energetic qualities of insular art. The insular majuscule script of the text itself appears to be the work of at least three different scribes. The lettering is in I and Gaul ink, and the colors used were derived from a wide range of substances, many of which were imports from distant lands. The manuscript takes its name from the Abbey of Kells, which was its home for centuries. Today, it is on permanent display at Trinity College Library, Dublin. The library usually displays two of the current four volumes at a time, one showing a major illustration and the other showing typical text pages. And the entire manuscript can be viewed on the library's digital collections repository. History Origin The Book of Kells is one of the finest and most famous of a group of manuscripts in what is known as the Insular Style. Produced from the late 6th through the early 9th centuries in monasteries in Ireland, Scotland and England and in continental monasteries with Hiberna Scottish or Anglo-Saxon foundations. These manuscripts include the Cathark of St. Columba, the Ambrosiana Orosius, Fragmentary Gospel in the Durham Dean and Chapter Library, and the Book of Duro. From the early 8th century come the Durham Gospels, the Ectonash Gospels, the Lindisfarne Gospels, and the Lichfield Gospels, among others, the Saint. Gaul Gospel Book belongs to the late 8th century and the Book of Armagh to the early 9th century. Scholars place these manuscripts together based on similarities in artistic style, script, and textual traditions. The fully developed style of the ornamentation of the Book of Kells places it late in this series, either from the late 8th or early 9th century. The Book of Kells follows many of the iconographic and stylistic traditions found in these earlier manuscripts. For example, the form of the decorated letters found in the insipid pages for the Gospels is surprisingly consistent in insular Gospels. Compare, for example, the insipid pages of the Gospel of Matthew in the Lindisfarne Gospels and in the Book of Kells, both of which feature intricate decorative knotwork patterns inside the outlines formed by the enlarged initial letters of the text. The name Book of Kells is derived from the Abbey of Kells in Kells, County Meath, which was its home for much of the medieval period. The manuscript's date and place of production have been the subject of considerable debate. Traditionally, the book was thought to have been created in the time of Columba, possibly even as the work of his own hands. This tradition has long been discredited on paleographic and stylistic grounds. Most evidence points to a composition date c. 800, long after St. Columba's death in 597. 
The proposed dating in the 9th century coincides with Viking raids on Iona, which began in 794 and eventually dispersed the monks and their holy relics into Ireland and Scotland. There is another tradition, with some traction among Irish scholars, that suggests the manuscript was created for the 200th anniversary of the saint's death. There are at least five competing theories about the manuscript's place of origin and time of completion. First, the book, or perhaps just the text, may have been created at Iona, then brought to Kales where the illuminations were perhaps added, and never finished. Second, the book may have been produced entirely at Iona. Third, the manuscript may have been produced entirely in the scriptorium at Kells. Fourth, it may have been produced in the north of England, perhaps at Lindisfarne, then brought to Iona and from there to Kells. Finally, it may have been the product of an unknown monastery in Pictish Scotland, though there is no actual evidence for this theory, especially considering the absence of any surviving manuscript from Pictland. Although the question of the exact location of the book's production will probably never be answered conclusively, the first theory that it was begun at Iona and continued at Kells, is widely accepted, regardless of which theory is true. It is certain that the Book of Kells was produced by Columban monks closely associated with the community at Iona. Medieval period Kells Abbey was plundered and pillaged by Vikings many times in the 10th century, and how the book survived there is not known. The earliest historical reference to the book, and indeed to the book's presence at Kells, can be found in a 1007 entry in the Arnolds of Ulster. This entry records that, the great gospel of Columcilla, the chief relic of the Western world, was wickedly stolen during the night from the Western sacristy of the great stone church at Senanus on account of its wrought shrine. The manuscript was recovered a few months later, minus its golden and bejeweled cover, under a sod. It is generally assumed that the Great Gospel of Columcilla is the Book of Kells. If this is correct, then the book was in Kells by 1007 and had been there long enough for thieves to learn of its presence. The force of ripping the manuscript free from its cover may account for the folios missing from the beginning and end of the Book of Kells. The description in the annals of the book is, of Columcilla, that is, having belonged to, and perhaps being made by Columba, suggests that the book was believed at that time to have been made on Iona. Regardless, the book was certainly at Kells in the 12th century, when land charters pertaining to the Abbey of Kells were copied onto some of its blank pages. The practice of copying of charters into important books was widespread in the medieval period, and such inscriptions in the Book of Kells provide concrete evidence about its location at the time. The Abbey of Kells was dissolved due to the ecclesiastical reforms of the 12th century. The Abbey Church was converted to a parish church in which the Book of Kells remained. Book of Kildare The 12th century writer Gerald of Wales, in his Topographia Hibernica, described in a famous passage seeing a great gospel book in Kildare which many have since assumed was the Book of Kells. The description certainly matches Kells. This book contains the harmony of the four evangelists according to Jerome, where for almost every page there are different designs, distinguished by varied colors. Here you may see the face of majesty, divinely drawn, here the mystic symbols of the evangelists, each with wings, now six, now four, now two, here the eagle, there the calf, here the man and there the lion, and other forms almost infinite. Look at them superficially with the ordinary glance, and you would think it is an erasure, and not tracery. Fine craftsmanship is all about you, but you might not notice it. Look more keenly at it and you will penetrate to the very shrine of art. You will make out intricacies, so delicate and so subtle, so full of knots and links, with colors so fresh and vivid, that you might say that all this were the work of an angel, and not of a man. Since Gerald claims to have seen this book in Kildare, he may have seen another, now lost, book equal in quality to the Book of Kells, or he may have misstated his location. 
modern period the Book of Kells remained in Kells until 1654. In that year, Cromwell's cavalry was quartered in the church at Kells, and the governor of the town sent the book to Dublin for safekeeping. Henry Jones, who later became Bishop of Meath after the Restoration, presented the manuscript to Trinity College in Dublin in 1661, and it has remained there ever since, except for brief loans to other libraries and museums. It has been on display to the public in the Old Library at Trinity since the 19th century. Over the years, the Book of Kells received several additions to its text. In the 16th century, one Gerald Plunkett of Dublin added a series of Roman numerals numbering the chapters of the Gospels according to the division created by 13th century Archbishop of Canterbury Stephen Langton. The prominent Anglican clergyman James Usher counted and numbered its folios in 1621, shortly after James VI and I named him Bishop of Meath. Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were invited to sign the book in 1849, however, they in fact signed a modern flyleaf which was erroneously believed to have been one of the original folios. The page bearing their signatures was removed when the book was rebound in 1953. Over the centuries, the book has been rebound several times. During an 18th-century rebinding, the pages were rather unsympathetically cropped, with small parts of some illustrations being lost. The book was also rebound in 1895, but that rebinding broke down quickly. By the late 1920s, several folios had detached completely and were kept separate from the main volume. In 1953, bookbinder Roger Powell rebound the manuscript in four volumes and stretched several pages that had developed bulges. Two volumes can normally be seen displayed at Trinity, one opened at a major decorated page, and one opened to show two text pages with smaller decorations. In 2000, the volume containing the Gospel of Mark was sent to Canberra, Australia, for an exhibition of illuminated manuscripts. This was only the fourth time the Book of Kells had been sent abroad for re-exhibition. Unfortunately, the volume suffered what has been called minor pigment damage while en route to Canberra. It is thought that the vibrations from the aeroplane's engines during the long flight may have caused the damage. Reproductions in 1951, the Swiss publisher U.R.'s Graf Verlag Bern produced the first facsimile of the Book of Kells. The majority of the pages were reproduced in black and white photographs, but the edition also featured 48 color reproductions, including all the full-page decorations. Under license from the Board of Trinity College Dublin, Thames and Hudson produced a second facsimile edition in 1974. This edition included all the full-page illustrations in the manuscript and a representative section of the ornamentation of the text pages, together with some enlarged details of the illustrations. The reproductions were all in full color, with photography by John Kennedy, Green Studio, Dublin. In 1979, Swiss publisher facsimile Verlag Luzon requested permission to produce a full color facsimile of the book. Permission was initially denied because Trinity College officials felt that the risk of damage to the book was too high. By 1986, Fake simile fur lug had developed a process that used gentle suction to straighten a page so that it could be photographed without touching it and so, won permission to publish a new facsimile. After each page was photographed, a single-page facsimile was prepared so the colors could be carefully compared to the original and adjustments made where necessary. The completed work was published in 1990 in a two-volume set containing the full facsimile and scholarly commentary. One copy is held by the Anglican Church in Kells, on the site of the original monastery. Mario Clef also reproduced folios from the Book of Kells and together with fake simile Verlag publisher U.R.'s Dugalin, curated an exhibition of the Book of Kells which included these facsimile pages. 
These facsimiles were created using the original techniques and were also presented in the Diocesan Museum of Trier. In 1994, Bernard Meehan, keeper of manuscripts at Trinity College Dublin, produced an introductory booklet on the Book of Kells, with 110 colour images of the manuscript. His 2012 book contained more than 80 pages from the manuscript reproduced full-size and in full color. A digital copy of the manuscript was produced by Trinity College in 2006 and was made available for purchase through Trinity College on DVD-ROM. It included the ability to leaf through each page, two pages at a time or look at a single page in a magnified setting. There were also a number of commentary tracks about the specific pages as well as the history of the book. Users were given the option to search by specific illuminated categories including animals, capitals and angels. It retailed for approximately 30 euros but has since been discontinued. The fake simile fur large images are now online at Trinity College's digital collections portal.